Hi, my name is Andy Parkin, Managing Director of the Multi Award winning Speed Screed. Uh, I just want to talk about membranes. Uh, not the damp proof membranes, but the slip membranes, uh, the vapour membranes, as you, you might know them. Uh, so, why do you actually need one? Uh, when you've got your insulation, the screed's going to go over the top. Why do you actually need to put a slip membrane? I, I think a lot of people think of flowing screeds and think, yes, because of containment and because it's quite a liquid product, I can see why I need a, a, a membrane there. Uh, and so that's not a, a difficult thing uh, to, to sort of get over why a membrane is required. Uh, but when it comes down to semi-dry screeds, traditional screeds, fast drying screeds, uh, then the lines are blurred a little bit and you will see probably uh, 50, 60 percent of all projects without a slit membrane and the screed going directly onto, uh, onto the surface. So I'd really just like to kind of cover the reasons, the reasons why it is best practice and it is recommended and it's recommended by the uh, insulation manufacturers uh, as, as well. So it's something that they're acutely aware of. So why do you need it? So first of all, uh, you need it for vapour control. Uh, so we've got vapour control here. It needs to be a barrier. Uh, because what you've got is if you've got warm air cooling down, and you've got the vapour, as soon as it hits onto the, the, the cool area, it, it cools, the, the, the warm air turns then back into, uh, into moisture and you can have damp. So this is something, if you think about it in uh, a, a kind of loft situation, etc., that's why you can often need uh, a damp proof membrane or a membrane in there and it's a vapour membrane. So it's to stop the moisture. So you're putting it on top of the, uh, top of the insulation and so when the uh, warm air comes through, when the vapour comes through, when it cools down, turns back into moisture, uh, you know, turns back into water, it's not going to affect your screed, your other, you know, uh, floor coverings, uh, etc. in there. So that's very important to have it as a vapour control. The second one is it prevents migration of the screed. So if, so if you think you're preparing the insulation boards, so in theory they should be as, as tightly buttered as, uh, as, as possible, but when you're hand compacting uh, sand and cement, you're having to force the screed so to get the compaction. So you're forcing the screed down. When you get that compaction, you can get migration of the boards. So the screed can push into any gaps available and with the best will in the world, you know, to really tightly book joint the insulation, it's so, so easy to get the screed in there as you're, uh, as you're compacting the screed. So I've just drawn a, a little bit of a diagram. I hope you can just see that. Uh, so this is the insulation uh, in, in green. You're butting it together so it's joining up. And that's assuming uh, that it's been cut uh, perfectly, so it's, it's going to butt up perfectly. Uh, so you're putting it up, the screed goes on top, and as the compaction is made on the surface, it can push into the joints. As it pushes into the joints, you get a migration of the screed into those joints. The, the insulation allows the screed in there. So then what you'll get is, is really twofold. So you'll get a, a pathway for, for heat loss. So you're not going to benefit from uh, the, you know, the, the heat, resist, heat loss resistance there. So the heat loss can come through there. The other thing that you possibly will get is then you've not got a, you know, potentially a solid base. So at that point, it might just be that uh, you get some uh, mirror crack in there. So there's a joint in there. If it's not tightly buttered because it's separated, you may over time, with some movement, actually get, uh, uh, get some cracking in, in the screed. So that's a, a possibility as, as well. So heat loss and then possible uh, cracking due to the fact that 
you've got the board starting to separate and then the base, the screen's only going to be as good as the base that it's, that it's actually on. The other reason, and this is one of the reasons that the manufacturers uh, really go overboard with it, is that it does prevent the reaction of the wet screed and the foil facer. So the foil, foil facer is, is an aluminium product. When uh, a cementitious or a calcium sulfate product comes into contact with it, if the board hasn't oxidized, so if it, if it hasn't oxidized, and visually there's no way of telling, so if you're getting it straight out the wrappers, uh, it won't have oxidized anyway. Perhaps if it's been left exposed on the site, it may, it may have oxidized, but if it hasn't oxidized, there will be a reaction. In, in a wet screed, in a flowing screed, that reaction, you'll actually see the, uh, the, the bubbles, the hydrogen bubbles coming through the screed and breaching the surface. So that is why you, you definitely need one with the flowing screed, because if you get that reaction, the bubbles come through to the surface. In a uh, traditional screed, you don't actually uh, see that happening, but it is happening. The reaction's taking place, but because it's a semi-dry product, you don't actually see that. So it's producing those gases, and those gases can weaken the screed. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something that's scientific and proven. Uh, proven. That's something that the uh, board manufacturers have in their, in their notes, and I'd be happy to send uh, that data over uh, to anybody that, uh, that would like to see that. Uh, so that's a, a really, really big reason to actually put a slip membrane over over the top of the insulation board to prevent that. So really that's coming down threefold, why it's best practice and essentially why it, it, it really is essential. As I say, you're probably getting 50% of projects that don't use it and initially you're not seeing anything that's, that's adverse happening. Uh, but this is uh, best practice and we'd like you to enjoy your screed for the design life of 50, 100 years, whatever the design life is on there, rather than experiencing issues further down the line. Thank you.